Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Babcock, and welcome to Lecture 4, Liberation and Rest, Communicating God's Sabbath. It's really difficult to overestimate the importance of the Exodus when we look to the formation of Israel's theology. The phrase, the Lord delivered his people from Egypt, is so frequent in the Old Testament that it has, in fact, been designated as Israel's original confession. The significance of the Exodus is not only evident in Israel's confession, but also in the prescription of practices that keep the Exodus fresh in the minds of the Israelites. One of these prescriptions is the weekly Sabbath rest. Rest. While the word Sabbath does not occur in Genesis, the concept is shown in the creation account where God creates the world and all living things in six days, resting on the seventh. This pattern is not only the formation of the Israelite week, but it also provides for a separation of work and rest on the one hand and secular activity and spiritual contemplation on the other. Exodus 20 commands as one of the Ten Commandments that we should remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall, shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it, you shall not do any work, you and your son and your daughter and your male servant and your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is with you within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. This commandment clarifies that the seventh day is meant to be the Sabbath day, although the text is not specific. The Decalogue goes on to clarify that the Sabbath day is holy, blessed, should be remembered, kept holy, belonging to the Lord, with the abstinence of work for Jew, Gentiles, servants, and even animals. The implication is that God rested on the seventh day of creation, and therefore mankind should follow God's example and rest upon the seventh day. It's important to keep in mind that God always has a preferential option for the disenfranchised and the poor. And it is unique to Israel that God specifically says, not just the Jew, his favored people, but also the Gentile and the servants and even the animals should have a day of rest. Another early allusion to the Sabbath is found in Exodus 16, which includes a discussion of the Sabbath day in the narrative of the Israelites wandering in the Sinai desert. Moses instructs the people to collect two days' worth of manna on the sixth day, reserving half for the seventh day, which is specified as a day of rest and a holy day to the Lord. Well, the lesson becomes a teachable moment when some of the people do not listen to Moses and go out on the seventh day looking for fresh manna, only to be disappointed. God asked Moses the rhetorical question directed to the people, How long do you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? The lesson here is really twofold. First, to show that the Sabbath day is a commandment of the Lord. And second, that the people need to rely on the word of God and not their own understanding. The balance of the references in Exodus add that the observance of the Sabbath should continue even during the harvest and planting season. So during the busiest time of the year, they should still take time out 
for rest and reflection upon God. It also adds that it is a sign between the Lord and mankind that God is the source of sanctification. We learn that the penalty for working on the Sabbath is death, and that it is a perpetual, in other words, always lasting covenant. Leviticus mentions the Sabbath 24 times. References to the Sabbath in Leviticus stress the importance of rest, humility towards God, the holiness of the day, care for the needy, permanence of the statute, consequences for disobedience. Further references in the Pentateuch tie the observance of the Sabbath to creation and the day that God rested, the Exodus, which is the redemption of Israel from slavery in Egypt. And in addition, the Sabbath is a sign of, of the everlasting covenant between God and Israel. At the time of the prophets and into the exilic period, the change, or there is a change of view of the Sabbath. It is at this point that the Sabbath becomes a legalistic lever applied by the priests, and the day becomes a drudgery more than a joyous occasion for rest and worship. God expresses through, through, through the prophets that observing the Sabbath is detestable when conducted for the wrong reasons. As Jesus begins his ministry, he enters the synagogue on the Sabbath and begins to teach with authority. Luke 4 adds that it was Jesus' normal custom to go to the synagogue on the Sabbath, showing that Jesus followed the customs outlined in the historical books and the prophets where the general population worshipped God at the entry to the temple. The Synoptic Gospels give the account of Jesus and his disciples traveling, eating, and Jesus performing healing miracles on the Sabbath. The Pharisees observe the act and confront Jesus about the break in Sabbath law as regulated during the intertestamental period. Jesus responds, that breaking the Sabbath was condoned for David in the Old Testament when he ate bread in the house of God, and further that the priests break the Sabbath every Sabbath by conducting the burnt and peace offerings. Jesus responds that because a person is of much greater value than an animal, it is acceptable to do good deeds on the Sabbath. Mark 2 Hold Jesus' words when he says, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. The phrase brings two primary points into focus. First, Jesus is clarifying that the Sabbath regulations, as interpreted during the intertestamental period by the Pharisees, lost the intent of the Sabbath prescribed in the New Testament. Therefore, the rules observed by the Pharisees were man-made and not God-made and able to be broken. Second, Jesus is demonstrating this, that the Sabbath proclaimed at creation was intended to serve mankind as a holy day, giving blessing and observing God's rest and restoration. Nothing done by Jesus or his disciples on, on the Sabbath is contrary with the purpose and intent of the Sabbath observance in the Old Testament. As such, Jesus is not rewriting the law, but fulfilling and clarifying the original law as prescribed in the Pentateuch, historical books, and the prophets. In light of our study, what does this Sabbath mean to us? today. In Deuteronomy 5, we find positive guidance as to how to worship God. The Sabbath is a term probably originating with a meaning of cease, 
Certainly, the cessation of normal activity is part of Sabbath observance. However, in the text, the sanctifying of the Sabbath carries with it a positive function as well to make holy. The New Testament upholds the importance of both rest and holy observance. Therefore, we find that the concept of Sabbath, to refrain from normal activities and to worship God, are both normative for today's church. However, these activities are voluntary and exist without condemnation. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.